Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today I am doing the impossible task. And truly, this one was almost impossible. I am ranking Taylor Swift's album opening songs from 10 to 1. Genuinely, this may be the hardest exercise I think I'll ever have to do when it comes to ranking Taylor Swift because I don't know if you've gone back and really looked at Taylor's opening songs of her albums, but they are all incredible. And I'm 100% serious when I say that. Truly, every single song, every single first song that she's put out, I really like all 10 of them. In fact, if I were to rate each of these songs on a scale of like one to 10, each of these songs would get at minimum three stars. There is no stinker in the bunch, which makes ranking them very, very difficult. But I did it. I did it. Before we get into the ranking, I'm going to go through each album and let you know what the opening song is and then we'll get into the ranking. So starting off with Taylor Swift, her debut album, the first track, Tim McGraw. Fearless is Fearless. Speak Now is Mine. Red, State of Grace, 1989, Welcome to New York. Reputation, Ready for It. Lover, I Forgot That You Existed. Folklore, The One. Evermore, Willow. And Midnight's Lavender Haze. Like I said, all incredible songs, which has made this so hard. So before we get into the ranking, just to clear things up, the song that I have at 10, I had, I was forced to put some song at 10, but I still really like this song. So I just, I don't want anyone thinking that I don't like some of these songs or whatever. This was almost, as I said, an impossible task, but let's just jump right in to the song that I have at 10. My least favorite of Taylor's opening songs, it's Welcome to New York. Now, again, I really like this song. I think this song sets the tone for that album. I mean, 1989 is all about having fun, about being free, about finding out who you are and being a young 20-something year old in a brand new city. It's about new beginnings. And Welcome to New York like sets the stage for all of that. The reason I have it at 10 is because I don't know that it's as deep or uh, it's like, it's, it's just like a fun pop song, but there's not a lot of meat to it. There's not, I don't think it's trying to be anything more than just being a fun pop song, which is great. And it does its job, but it's not, it's also not a song that I'm like continuously going back to and referencing when it comes on. I'm, I'm like, oh, that's a fun song, but it's not a song I'm always I'm always going back to. So for that reason, it's number 10. Number nine on the list, I Forgot That You Existed. Now I, I think, am one of I Forgot That You Existed's biggest fans. I love this song. And I know this song isn't everyone's favorite. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are not fans of this song, but I really like it. I think it's fun. I think it's cheeky, kind of sassy. It has like just a great melody. It's, it's great. But similarly to Welcome to New York, it's not very deep, which is fine. It's, it's, it's not supposed to be deep. It's setting the tone for the rest of the album going forward. Um, it's just like a fun pop song. So for that reason, it's at nine. But again, I, I think this is one of her best songs. It's one of my favorite songs on Lover as an album. I think it's great. But unfortunately, there's many other fantastic songs to come. And so I had to put it somewhere. So that's why it's at nine. Number eight is the one from Folklore. I think this song is so great. I think it is. I remember, I mean, we all were in the same position, right? When she surprise dropped Folklore in the middle of the pandemic in July, we had no idea it was coming. We press play on that very first day that it was out and we hear those opening notes of that song. And it was like, ooh, this is so different. This is unique. This is interesting. This is a song that I love to have on in the background if I'm doing work or if I'm driving. It's just like an easy listening song. It's lyrically, I think, very interesting. I'm happy. I'm an Invisible String fan, but I am happy she added it into the Eras Tour set list because I think it's I think it's a fun song to hear live. It's not, again, one of my favorite opening tracks, but it's very solid. So it's at eight. And coming right after Folklore, was Evermore. So at number seven, we have Willow. Willow is 
a great single. It was Taylor's single from Evermore. Again, very strong opening track. I think it's like very, I mean, you can kind of tell in the way that she performs that song live on tour. It's like almost witchy in a way. And you kind of want to be like walking through like a forest with like holding a lantern with like a cloak over you. It's it, it definitely like sets a mood. It sets a tone. I thought it really, it told you what Evermore was as an album as the first song on the album. It did everything it was supposed to do. It's only fault is that I'm having to compare it to other very strong opening songs. So that's why it's at seven. But again, very, very strong song. Okay. Number six, we have mine from Speak Now. I am a mine apologist. I don't know that there's people that hate this song, but I definitely don't think it gets the love and respect that it deserves. I love this song. I especially love, I don't know if anybody else is like as obsessed with this as I am, but I love the mine live version of the song that she put out. I don't know when she put it out exactly. I think it was from the Speak Now tour, but you can find it on Spotify. I'm obsessed with that version of this song for some reason. I think it's so good. It made me see the song in a different way and made me love it so much more. So I feel like other people would probably have mine maybe around like the 10, 9, 8 spot, but there's a just a soft spot in my heart for this song. Lyrically, I think it's really interesting. I love the storytelling. Um, I think she has actually some of her best lyrics in this song, um, which is why for me, it's at six. Um, Number five, smack dab in the middle of the ranking, Lavender Haze. She just, again, I'm going to keep saying the same thing over and over again, but I feel like she does such a great job of picking these album tracks or these first songs on the album because it immediately transports you into the world that you're going to be spending time in. I think, and obviously she's a genius artist in, in this exact way where you just, you pick, you, you press play on the first song and you just kind of immediately get into that headspace and Lavender Haze just like takes you there. It's unique. Again, it's different. It's different than anything we've kind of heard Taylor Swift do before. I just, I think, I think this is one of her best songs off of Midnight's um, A+. 10 out of 10. Love this song. Okay, number four, State of Grace from Red. I am a State of Grace stan. I am obsessed with this song. I was, my first Taylor Swift concert that I ever went to was the Red Tour. So I got to see her perform State of Grace live. I, it was an amazing experience for me. I, again, compared, uh, thinking about mine and State of Grace, lyrically, so incredible. Tells you this exact story. Um, I think the guitar in State of Grace is so great. I wish she would play this song more. I think I, when I did, when I ranked um, the eras from the eras tour, I kind of said which which eras I thought were the best or were the strongest um, that she performs live and which I felt like she weren't as strong. And I, I didn't have Red as one of my favorite eras that she performs on tour because I feel like it's missing that like album track that... If you are a red stan, you probably love. And I think for me as a red stan, it is State of Grace. Like I would have loved for her to have put that song in the tour because it's so fun. And this is a great song. If you're wanting a song to like roll down the windows, blast when you're just like, when it's beautiful weather outside, you want to just like, I don't know, feel good, put on State of Grace. Okay, we've made it to the top three. These are my top three favorite songs, favorite um, opening songs. Number three, Tim McGraw. I I honestly forgot that Tim McGraw was the opening track off of her debut album. I cannot believe that this is the first, this is her first opening track ever because Tim McGraw is an all-time classic, amazing. I, 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 I mean, the fact that she put this out when she was 16 is mind-blowing. I love Tim McGraw. I, I go back to it frequently. I think this is just, it's a classic. It's a straight up classic. And when I was putting this ranking together, I was trying to like justify putting other songs ahead of it. And I, and I just couldn't. I'm like, this song deserves to be one of the best of her opening tracks ever. So for that reason, number three. Okay, number two, ready for it. I I think like a lot of people, when, when Reputation, when the rollout was happening with Reputation and she first put out Look What You Made Me Do. I didn't love the song, Look What You Made Me Do. I thought it was 
fine, but it was so different from anything we had ever heard from her before. I also, I felt like she, it just was, it just, it was, it took me a while to get used to it. I now love that song. I think it's like really fun and different and unique. But then if you remember, if you were around during this time, she started to kind of sprinkle out some other songs ahead of the album dropping. And she put out Ready For It. Actually, if I remember correctly, I believe she actually, we first heard it as a, it was a part of a college football, um, like commercial they had the rights. They they actually had this song. And that was the first time we ever heard it, if I'm remembering correctly. And I remember hearing that, that beat drop and being like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, it is still to this day, one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. I, I, I play this song all the time, all the time. If I ever need to get like pumped up for something, if I need to have like better energy, I go to this song. I also think it's having a bit of a re- like renaissance people are discovering it in new ways because of the opening line knew he was a killer first time that i saw him um which obviously you know kill a trav um i i think this song is so fantastic and this is an example of like it's not the most lyrically deep song compared to some of the other songs on this list but the production is so fantastic and so a plus that I can't ignore it. It has to be at number two. And at number one, my favorite of Taylor's album opening songs is Fearless. Now this might be shocking. I feel like most people probably wouldn't put Fearless at number one, but I am obsessed with Fearless. I think it is such a great song. I think the guitar is so good. I just, it makes me smile. Every time this song comes on, I smile. I love how she performs it in the Eras tour. I don't really have anything else to say other than if I, and this is how I decided that this was my number one song. I, I decided which song am I going to turn on more times than not? Like which song am, am I going to turn to if I'm having a bad day? If I want to like just feel better, it's, it's, it's going to be fearless. It's going to be fearless every single time. I love it. I think it is fantastic. Um, and always makes me feel good and always transports me like back to when I first heard this song when I was 15 years old as a teenager. Like it just, I have a very visceral reaction when I hear it. And I don't think I can say the same for most of the other songs on this list, which is why I decided to put it at number one. So there you have it. That is my official ranking of uh, Taylor's album opening songs. I'm sure we will revisit this ranking once the new album comes out. We'll figure out where that opening song, Fortnite, is going to land in this ranking. Um, Please let me know in the comments your ranking, what's your favorite of her opening songs, least favorite, where do you think I went wrong? Tell me all your thoughts, please, please, please. As always, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!